have the pleasure of doing an unbelievable interview right now with an unbelievable man. He was 16 years old, playing the game he loved, probably felt invincible, and then a hit that was an accident that, that changed his life forever. Michael Schwass wrote the book called Don't Blame the Game, the game, of course, being hockey. And right. uh, I know as a hockey mom, I sit there with, you know, nervous, uh, sweaty palms when I, when I watch my son play. I, I can't imagine what your family was feeling. And you talk about this accident with such clarity of recall that I, I, I was just in tears. Well, you know, it's kind of a fascinating story. And I was one of the highest scorers in the state of Illinois playing high school hockey at the time. And the, the hit came, the check came from the blind side. I didn't see it coming. And uh, it's one of those things you don't anticipate. So uh, my head hit the end boards and injured my spinal cord and broke the C4-5 vertebrae, paralyzing me from the neck down. And my family rushed down, as you said, Dina, from the stands, as did everyone else. Play had stopped. And uh, they came to the scene to find out what had happened to their star player and to their family member. And unfortunately, it ended up in paralysis. You talk about how surreal that moment was and the moment in the hospital when the priest is there to administer last rites and, and talking about whether or not you would have this surgery. And you thought, well, I'll just have the surgery so that I can get back to my life. I, I don't think at that point realizing how different your life would be. Uh, so well said. And you know, I'm a hockey player, right? So hockey players You're always tough. want to get back for the third period, right? <laughs> we, can't, we can't miss the rest of the game. So, you know, my thing was that you know, I didn't realize anything about a spinal cord injury or what happens to a person when they have a disability. And that, um, you know, these things are long term. And then now they have, you know, technology is better, science is better, medicine is better. When I was injured, it wasn't quite so good. And uh, they didn't know exactly how to get a person up and running again. That toughness that you showed not only helped you really at one point to walk even after your surgery, but also that mental toughness, I think, helped you to continue on. And so many of us can learn such a great lesson from, from the way you handled it and, and really some of the messages that you share in your book here. That's right. You know, George Allen once said that mental preparation never ends. And I think the discipline that I learned from hockey and from being an athlete most of my life carried over when I began to walk again. Now it's been noted that I've been the first chronic quadriplegic to walk naturally again. So it took me about five and a half years of therapy, of chronic work every day in, in therapy, back and forth and back and forth before I was able to stand and actually stand over the injury site and uh, be able to walk again. It's so incredible, and then it's sort of come full circle. We should explain why you're back in the wheelchair now because of a series of infections and things like That's that. Right. That's right. That's right. In 1997, when I was going for my master's degree in psychology and social work, I got into a massive staph infection, which nearly knocked me out of the game again. But uh, fortunately, with great care and great family help and support and the medical doctors and, and coming to my aid, and uh, I was able to come back and finish up my degree, and now I'm a life coach and psychotherapist. And through all of these ups and downs, that's it. I think you help people to overcome some of their challenges, and, and you're using everything that you've learned to help other people now, and I just think that's so fabulous. Thanks for saying that, because the able-bodied people get as much out of this as the disabled people do, too, and sometimes more. Sometimes oh, absolutely, so. because everyone's got challenges. And I think right now a lot of people are feeling so hopeless, and that's why this is such a gem. Right, the economy's down, you know, and that's why we named it Don't Blame the Game because it's not hockey's fault. And today you, you don't blame your stockbroker for what happened to the economy, you know. You don't blame your, you don't want to blame your coworker for, you know, skipping responsibility. And, you know, uh, Mer Mercury Morris once said after beating his addiction to cocaine, he said you don't blame the gas pedal for a speeding ticket. So, and you don't blame the game. You've got so many great quotes uh, all scattered throughout the book. It's so excellent. You also have an event coming up that you wanted to talk about for your foundation. You have a book signing, I know, but then uh, an event at the uh, Rolling Green Country Club. When is that? Thursday, that, July 9th. July 9th, and that'll be uh, with the Laris Foundation. The foundation I work with now, the First Step Foundation, will be merging with the Laris Foundation and to advance the lives of people with disabilities. Well, thank you so much for all you do and for writing this book. It really is just so inspiring. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And Me we'll too. be right back.